Hey everybody, this is Sierra from the Local History and Genealogy Department at the Kenton County Public Library Covington Branch. And today I am excited to welcome you to the first stop of our special virtual walking tour. This summer we are going to visit a rainbow of Kenton County houses. And I'm really excited um, to do this tour with you guys because uh, we've all been researching uh, houses and we found some really exciting stories, so I'm really excited to share these and um, you know, get to visit some houses that we haven't got to visit before on any of our previous walking tours. All right, so there we go. So over the summer, we are going to visit a rainbow of houses and that goes along with the Summer Reading Club celebration theme of Reading Colors Your World. Uh, if you haven't um, signed up yet or visited our website, SRC starts June 1st, so go to kentonlibrary.org slash SRC to learn more about how to sign up for Summer Reading Club. Uh, to let you know more about our tour, today is uh, June 2nd, so we are visiting 111 Wallace today, which is a red house, but the rest of the tour will take place over the summer. Um, these video presentations will be at 2 p.m. We'll post them on Facebook and then they will also be on YouTube. Next, um, in two weeks, on June 16th, we'll be visiting an orange house at 707 Green Up Street. Um, and then on June 30th, we'll be at a yellow house, 1213 Green Up. On uh, July 14th, we're gonna visit 122 Russell Avenue. On July 28th, we'll be at 542 Green Up Street. And then on August 11th, the video will be 527 Russell Street. And on August 25th, we will be talking about 703 Bakewell Street. So we have some houses pretty much um, in a bunch of different neighborhoods. This is really going to be a lot of fun. There's some great stories here that we haven't got to share before. And if you're wondering what these houses look like, uh, here's a kind of a sneak peek. We will, um, we're going to have a lot of fun going and talking about these houses over the summer. Um, you'll get to meet uh some and see a bunch of different staff members over the summer do these videos so um we're really excited to get started and share all of these wonderful stories that we've been researching okay so today is the red house and the first house on our tour and today we're going to talk about 111 wallace avenue uh, this home is located in wallace woods and it's a beautiful home and i'm really excited to share some of the the history of it with you guys today. So first things first, um, I wanted to share some of the architectural details with you, uh, a little bit more about its, its built history. So this is a brick house. It was built in 1894 for Jenny Semple Holmes and her family. It is uh, along Wallace Avenue and um, the home is, is mostly Queen Anne. It's kind of, it does have a few eclectic mix elements, but it's mostly Queen Anne, which was popular between 1880 and 1910. Um, you'll notice that it has a asymmetrical facade. So you can see the square over here where it kind of comes out in more square shape and then the round over here. That's a common feature of Queen Anne style homes. You can also see that it's got a front porch, which covers half or the whole front of the facade of the home. Um, a second story porch or balcony was also really popular during this time period. Up here, I know it's kind of hard to see because of the shadow of the photograph, but there are Palladian windows. So that's where these three windows are. And then there's a little half crescent, crescent window up here. And then it also has towers. And you can, there's one along the side there and then it's also got a front gabled roof and that means that the front of the roof the gabling this kind of triangular shape here faces the the front of the house so here's the front door so it has a front gable roof and that is common that's some of the common features of Queen Anne style homes so this is very much a, a popular style in 1894 when it was built and this photograph came from our Faces and Places photograph collection, which is um, 
online at www.kentlibrary.org slash genphotos and you can also visit there's a link here if you didn't get that written down if you want to look at this particular photo okay so the first occupants of 111 wallace was the holmes family um on the left here that's miss jenny simple holmes and on the right is her husband harry s holmes um just a little bit more about the family harry we'll start with harry Harry was a architect. That was his first career. He um, was part of the firm Holmes and Martin, and they were architects and decorators, and they had an office in downtown Cincinnati on 4th Street. Uh, he eventually dissolved that company and went to work for the savings department at the Central Trust Company of Cincinnati, so he went into banking. And when he retired, which I, f I find it funny that they say he retired in the newspaper, he entered the insurance business until his death in 1920. Um, so he was a very influential, wealthy man, um, highly educated. Him, Harry and Jenny had four children, um, Jenny Holmes Allen, Robert Southworth Holmes, Harry Starrett Holmes, and Anna Cook Holmes. Um, Jenny married an Allen. Uh, Let's talk a little bit more about Jenny. So Jenny had a daughter named Jenny, which is awesome. Jenny was a descendant of a very prominent family, and that being the Wallace family. So she lives on Wallace Avenue. The neighborhood's called Wallace Woods, so she's connected to those Wallaces. Um, she was born in 1847 in Cincinnati, and her father was Robert Semple, and her mother was Helen Wallace. Um, her mother died just two years after she was born, but she remained very close to her maternal grandmother, um, Jane Wallace. And uh, let's talk a little bit more about the Wallace family, because this house is in Wallace Woods, and this is a descendant of the Wallace family. Okay, so Jenny comes from the Wallace family. This is a picture of her mother, Helen. Helen Wallace Semple. This is a picture, um, I cropped it, but it, you can look at the original picture. It's actually taken from the living room view. And so uh, this picture was hanging on the wall at the Longwood home, which I'm gonna talk about here in a little bit. But if you wanna follow along here, Jenny is, is down here as my first generation. Her parents were Helen Wallace and Robert Semple. Um, Helen's brother was Charles G. Wallace, and that becomes very, very important later. Um, her grandparents were Robert Wallace and Jane Starrett Wallace. So if you know anything about Wallace Woods, that's where the Starrett Avenue name comes from. Robert Wallace was a War of 1812 veteran. Um, they, he was part of a company that marched on Detroit, Michigan. He was captured, but he was eventually paroled. And his family moved into what is now called Wallace Woods um, and built the Longwood family home around 1833. Um, and prior to that, his father, Robert Wallace, was married to Rebecca Chambers. He's actually a Revolutionary War veteran and um, was an artillery officer under General George Washington. So she has a long history here with the Wallace family and the original landowners of Wallace, um, what is now Wallace, mostly Wallace Woods. Um, let me go to the next slide. So let's talk about the Wallace property. This is a this is a good map because it's from 1883. It kind of gives you a an idea of how massively large the Wallace property was. Um, you can see this is the what they call the corporation line for Covington. That is um, now uh, I believe that's a Wallace Avenue. But the basically the city of Covington hadn't officially annexed the Wallace property in 1883. It didn't happen until um, the early 1900s. And you can see the C.G. Wallace estate is here. Um, by that point, it was owned by Charles Wallace, so Jenny um, Holmes's uncle. And you can see that they have a few properties here on the map. The Wallaces did divide up their estate um, into lots by the 1880s. So there were other people living on the Wallace estate. Um, 
for example, the Shilatos had built a cottage um, on the Wallace property, and um, the Shilatos are related to the Wallaces. Robert Wallace's daughter married into the Shilato family, so she wanted a summer home to be close to her parents. Um, the Simral family had moved into Wallace Woods at their home, and it was known as Edgewood. So um, there were other people living in Wallace Woods by the 1880s, or was now Wallace Woods, but it was all the wall, still largely the Wallace property. Uh, this is Longwood, the original Wallace homestead. Um, it was a large farmhouse. There were other buildings, but this is a good view of the original house. Um, and this was the property that was built by Robert Wallace Jr. So let's talk about the, the, div the larger scale division of the Wallace property. Um, so when Robert Wallace died in 1863, his wife Jane Starrett um, lived until 1883. They decided that they were going to leave their estate in five equal shares to their living children and grandchildren. So at that point, it was Charles G. Wallace, Mary Shilato, Robert B. Wallace, Lucy Neff, and one share to be divided between their granddaughters, Jenny Simple Holmes and Elizabeth Athey. And their mothers, Helen and Elizabeth, had, had died before Jane and Robert had died. Um, so a large majority of the homestead actually remained intact, even though Jane died in 1883. She left uh, basically it, Charles in charge of the property, her son Charles. And so he stayed on the property and he lived at Longwood and um, his mother uh, basically left him in charge of the farm. They didn't make any plans for what would happen after Charles died. So he didn't, he died in 19, 1893 and he did not leave a will or a last testament as to how he wanted his estate divided. And so that pretty much created a, a bit of a court problem for the family. So Jenny um, Simple Holmes petitioned the court to settle and divide what was the Robert Wallace estate originally. And so she had to bring all of her relatives and all of the, the Wallace heirs into court. And they had to divide, had to figure out how they were going to divide the Wallace property to make good on the will. And if you, look at this article that I got out of the historical Kentucky Post database. Um, it was, there were a lot of people involved in the settlement of this estate. Um, there were the Shilatos, the Wallaces, the Semples, the Mortons, and the Neffs. Um, the division of this estate was going to potentially be worth tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, which it ended up being more like a hundred, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so, um, it was a pretty, it took a couple years for them to sort this out in court. Mm -hmm. So what did that look like? Well, if you remember, if you kind of think back to that 1883 map where it's just this large piece of property that hasn't been divided into lots or any, any streets have really been added to the map, this gives you a better idea of what that looked like. So I have pieced this map together um, it is basically four maps of a, of a plot map to the Robert Wallace subdivision. And you can see where they created all of the lots. They've added in, you have Wallace, Scott, Greenup. You have the Starrett Avenue here, Edward, William. You basically divided up the entire property into lots all the way to the Holmes um, property and where now the Holmes High School is. So. Um, this is a pretty substantial division of lots, and this is potentially worth thousands and thousands of dollars in property. This is a this is a lot of lots. It's amazing to see this view of how it looked originally. Um, you can also see where like the Wallace property is. Um, that was where Longwood still was. You can see where the Simrals lived, um, the Starrett property should be one of these two. So you can kind of see where there's um, Shilatos lives. So some of those lots did already get sold, but there was a lot of lots here to be, um, to be built upon. So this map is from 1910. So from 1893 to 1910, 
there was a there was a slow de- development of the neighborhood. A lot of the houses here in in Wallace didn't actually um, get built in the first fifteen years due to an economic recession. So the neighborhood kind of slowly came together between eighteen ninety four and nineteen ten. Um, a couple things I want to point out is that here is the um, one eleven is right here. So that's where the the Semple property is, and um, so she the Semple so Jenny Semple Homes did buy and keep a lot and build a and build a home, um, but the rest of the houses are pretty much new development. So that's why this neighborhood you'll notice that there's a lot of Queen Anne style homes, but that there are some other architectural um, style homes in the neighborhood that we'll talk about here in a little bit but yeah this is amazing to see how many homes have started to develop here in this neighborhood just in 15 years and by 1954 the whole neighborhood had pretty much been developed um i really like this map too because it kind of shows you this is a baseball field for homes so you can kind of see how the neighborhood kind of grew around the homes campus but for the most part wallace was pretty pretty developed at this point um, you have lots of homes on Green Up, 24th, Starrett. Uh, what makes me laugh uh, about these maps is that Starrett is misspelled. It is with an E at the end, not an I. So, because um, that is the family name, Jane Starrett Wallace. She was a Starrett. So that's where the Starrett Avenue name comes from. If you want to look more into these Sanborn maps, we have Kentucky Sanborn fire insurance maps on our website. Just go to kentlibrary.org slash genealogy and you can look um, under our research tools for these Sanborn maps. You can view them from home with your library card. I highly recommend looking at these maps um, and blowing them up so you can see all the house details. It's really, it's really awesome. So as Wallace was developed, there, there's all kinds of families that have moved into Wallace Woods over the years. Um, many historic families. Um, the Coppins family, John R. Roberts Coppin Jr., son of the Coppins department store founder, lived in Wallace Woods. Harvey Myers Jr., um, he was a prominent attorney. He lived in Wallace Woods at 28 Wallace. Frank Michaels, um, owner of Michaels Art Bronze Company, he lived at 12 Wallace. Martin Durrett developed the Martana Flats, which you can see right here. These are still standing today. And then Wallace Stewart was the vice president of Stewart Ironworks, and he lived at 117 Wallace. So this neighborhood has been home to a lot of historic families, not just the Wallace family, which is really, it has a really nice, vivid history. Okay, so in two weeks, join us again. We're going to come back, and I'm going to talk about, for the next stop, which is an orange house. I'll be on the tour for the orange house is 707 Green Up Street. This house has been so much fun to research. It's got a really surprising story. Um, I'll just keep, I don't want to tell you too much because I want you to come back and watch it. Uh, this is our orange house. I love the fish scaling tiles there. It's amazing. Um, we will be back at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, June 16th here on Facebook. So please join us for that and learn more about this property and the inhabitants who live there because it has... I've driven by this house on Green Up so many times, and I never knew that it had such a wonderful history, and I think you're going to be surprised. If you have any questions or want to contact us about doing local history, property research, genealogy, you can reach us at, by email at history at kentlibrary.org. You can call us at 962-4070, or you can reach us on the web at kentlibrary.org slash genealogy. Um, we're, we're really excited to help you research a local property um, and find some of these wonderful stories that you might not know about your houses. And um, just a reminder again that if you want more information about Summer Reading Celebration, just visit kentonlibrary.org slash SRC. Thanks for joining me today.